Have you ever walked up to your car, pressed a little button on that small plastic remote in your hand, and like magic, the doors unlock, the lights flash, maybe even the engine starts? We don't really think about it because it's so normal today, but that tiny device, the key fob, is a fascinating piece of technology. So today, let's break it down and explore. Key fob, how does it work? It's more than just a convenience. It's a carefully designed system of electronics, codes, and security features. Let's get into it right here on History of Simple Things. Before key fobs existed, we relied on simple metal keys. You'd stick a key in the lock, turn it, and that was that. It was reliable, but not very convenient. In the 1980s and 1990s, car manufacturers started introducing electronic remote entry systems. The early versions were simple. Press a button, and it would send a radio signal to the car to lock or unlock the doors. Over time, this basic idea evolved into the key fob we know today, which doesn't just open doors, but can also start engines, open trunks, and even act as a digital ID for the car. At its core, a key fob is a small wireless remote control. It usually comes with your car key, or in modern cars, it replaces the key entirely. Inside that little plastic shell is a tiny circuit board, a battery, an antenna, and a microchip that handles the communication with your car. On the outside, you see the buttons. Lock, unlock, trunk, maybe panic mode, but it's what's happening invisibly in the background that makes it so impressive. So how does the key fob talk to your car? The answer is radio waves. When you press a button on your fob, it sends a short radio signal at a specific frequency, usually 315 megahertz or 433 megahertz, depending on the region and manufacturer. Your car has a receiver tuned to that same frequency, waiting for the right message. If the signal matches what the car is programmed to recognize, the car responds, unlocking the doors, flashing the lights, or performing whatever action was requested. It's kind of like a walkie-talkie, but instead of two people talking, it's a fob and a car exchanging very short, specific codes. Now here's the important part, security. Imagine if the signal your key fob sent was always the same. A thief with the right equipment could record it, play it back, and unlock your car. That's called replay attack and it was a big problem in early systems. To solve this, modern key fobs use something called rolling codes. Every time you press a button, the fob generates a new code using an encrypted algorithm. The car is synchronized with the fob and knows what the next valid code should be. Once that code is used, it's discarded, and both the fob and the car move on to the next one in the sequence. This makes replay attacks practically useless because the car won't accept an old code twice. Think of it like a constantly changing password that both your car and your fob already agreed on in advance. Pressing buttons is convenient enough, but car makers took it even further with what's called passive keyless entry. That's when you don't even press a button. You just walk up to your car touch the handle, and it unlocks automatically. How does that work? Instead of you pressing a button to send a signal, the car itself sends out a low-frequency challenge signal when it senses the fob nearby. The fob then replies with the right encrypted response. If the car recognizes it, the doors unlock. Some systems even allow push-button start, so as long as the fob is inside the car, the engine will start with just a press. This two-way communication makes life easier, but it also introduces new security challenges, which we'll get to in a moment. Let's take a closer look at the hardware inside. Pop open a key fob, and you'll usually find battery. 
a small coin cell battery, often a CR2032, that powers everything. Circuit board, the brain of the fob, where the microcontroller and radio transmitter live. Antenna, a tiny coil of wire or printed trace that sends and receives signals, buttons, and contacts. The parts you press, which complete a circuit to trigger a signal. Immobilizer, chip. In many modern fobs, there's also a transponder chip used for ignition security. Together, these components make the fob both a transmitter and a digital key that your car can trust. Here's a fun detail. Why do we even call it a fob? The word actually comes from Old English and German roots, meaning a small pocket or a decorative attachment. In the 1800s, people would keep pocket watches on chains, and the little trinket attached to the chain was called a fob. The name carried over to describe the small attachment to your keychain. Today, key fob specifically refers to the electronic remote we all carry. So where are we headed? Some automakers are already experimenting with digital keys stored in your smartphone. Instead of carrying a separate fob, your phone uses Bluetooth or NFC to unlock and start the car. Others are looking into biometric systems, fingerprint scanners, or even facial recognition. Still, key fobs remain popular because they're simple, reliable, and don't depend on your phone battery. What makes the key fob fascinating is how much complexity is packed into something we barely think about. From radio frequencies to encryption algorithms, from immobilizers to passive entry, it's all designed to make our lives easier while keeping our cars secure. The next time you press that little button and hear your car beep back at you, you'll know it's not just a beep, it's a sophisticated digital handshake happening in the blink of an eye. So that's how a key fob works. It may look simple, but it's actually a blend of clever engineering, cryptography, and communication technology. From its humble beginnings as a remote unlock device to the advanced smart keys we use today, the key fob is a perfect example of everyday tech hiding in plain sight. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.